This time we're going to talk about a razzle-dazzle trick play in the EFHL rule set. This is also known as a, a halfback pass, and you'll see why in just a moment. This costs one bonus offensive stoppage. It's somewhat similar to a play-action pass, except instead of faking a handoff and have the quarterback throw the ball, what you're actually doing is actually handing off the ball to a running back who is then going to uh, throw the pass themselves. Now, if you happen to be using defensive pressure sticks, then because it's a, a, a halfback or a running back, it doesn't have to be a halfback, throwing the ball instead of the quarterback, that's going to mandate automatic defensive pressure, whether you're actually under any defensive pressure or not. Uh, again, because uh, you're not, the running backs are not as experienced throwing a ball as the quarterback is. It stands to reason. But here's the procedure. Quarterback either stands under center or in shotgun and takes the snap, uh, either immediately after the snap or after the read. Quarterback is going to perform a handoff to one of the running backs. And uh, as always, roll 2d6 to determine whether there was a fumble or not. And uh, then the offensive coach is going to switch on the motor as if it were a typical run play, however... Prior to the running back crossing the line of scrimmage, and that's important, uh, the quarterback stop or the uh, offensive coach stops the, the motor and declares razzle dazzle. At which point, one bonus offensive stoppage is spent, and all offensive unblocked players, not defensive, may pivot. And um, the running back with the ball, who probably is going to roll out, you know, to the side. Uh, you could approach the line of scrimmage. That's just dangerous. You might get tackled uh, prior to uh, being able to throw the pass. Um, but wherever the running back is, if, if they haven't been tackled and if they're behind the line of scrimmage, uh, they can uh, throw the forward pass using a defensive pressure passing stick to an eligible downfield receiver. Once that's been measured and uh, lined up and you've got the ball marker on the field, uh, the offensive coach turns the motor on until there's either a completion or incompletion or interception. And if the uh, eligible receiver catches the pass, then the ball carrier, who just caught the pass, may pivot only. No other players may pivot. Then the defensive coach uh, takes control of the switch, uh, bumps it for a nanosecond. Then all unblocked players except for the ball carrier may pivot. And then uh, the defensive coach uh, turns the motor on until the play is resolved. Um, this is another one of these trick plays that has a, a high degree of success if your bases behave and cooperate and go where you want them to go and where you anticipate them to go because uh, the defense cannot respond. Uh, the defense has been tricked into thinking the uh, running back is going to run with the ball, but instead he... he he rears back and, and heaves the ball downfield. With uh, the defensive pressure sticks, there is a higher degree of probability the pass is going to be incomplete because of the longer distance needed to make the completion. Uh, it's a risky uh, gamble, but it can really pay off for some long yardage. So let's run it. Again, no guarantees of success. I have not uh, stretched these players, so to speak. I mean, they, they their bases haven't really been looked at in... in a couple of days. So the quarterback has flipped around on his base. We've got uh, the tight end over on this side and uh, a wide out back and flanker. So I'll have three eligible receivers. I'm anticipating one or both of these receivers to fall over or these players to fall over because of uh, a very annoying problem I'm having with this, with this game board. Uh, the motor just keeps knocking everything down right here. Uh, I've got the switch turned down considerably, try to mitigate that, but I bet it won't work. I've got some uh, stationary players. Both running backs are going to be stationary, and the uh, free safety is stationary. Uh, on our last uh, video, the uh, uh, play action free safety came forward, and there was no one back there to do anything about that. So I'm going to give the defense a better chance this time. All right, here's the snap. Okay, very small bump there. Um Okay, um, how's the blocking scheme here? Tight end needs to get open, but he's got this guy to contend with, 
who is going to chance maintaining forward rather than turning around. Uh, yes, tight end is probably going to run downfield, but uh, this is going to be a, a very short read, obviously. So everybody else except for the free safety is going to do what they're going to do. All right. Quarterback should continue to go straight back here. Here's the read. Not too far back. Okay, are we in handoff range here? Uh, bear with me just one moment. I don't think so. This might be a pitch. Well, you be the judge. That That's probably handoff range. Uh, uh, it's either a handoff or a pitch out. It doesn't really matter. Uh, so, uh, yeah, we're going to give it to number 26, who is... Uh, going to uh, do this. You know, I'd pick him up and I'd try to sell it, make it look like I'm turning his dial or something. So the defense is going to think that I'm going to run some sort of uh, either a, a curl route and, or perhaps uh, uh, just a, an in, in run or maybe an off tackle, a, a hard off tackle. But we're also going to take him off his base and send him this way. Whoops. And... Uh, there's really no one open yet. So, well, 29 is getting open. But, of course, 30 is... I'm going to try to keep him a little straighter than that. Of course, 30 is going to continue to run downfield with him. So, uh, I tell you, if I was feeling brave, I would turn 29's dial to the left so that he would run a um, an in route uh, towards the center of the field. Uh, but we're just going to keep him straight ahead. Um, so, at this point... Uh, the defense, I'm going to leave him stationary. Uh, at this point, the defense thinks this is just a standard um, run play. The outside linebacker may shut this play down quickly if he's able to get around this offensive tackle. But uh, we're going to send uh, number 26 towards this sideline in an attempt to get someone. In fact, we may have to do this. Um, all right. Okay, so uh, the offensive coach uh, is going to uh, bump the switch, and he's going to call Razzle Dazzle. Uh, we have some uh, open players here, uh, so that costs one bonus offensive stoppage. The defense may not pivot. So now we've got a, a safety back here that can't move, but he's on a, a stationary base. He could be a problem later. 29 is well covered. Uh, 26 is going to have his work cut out for him making this pass. It's going to be a almost certainly a long yardage pass. And, of course, there's going to be defensive pressure. So, uh, yep, that's outside of medium yardage. So we now we know which stick we're going to have to use. And um, so let's go ahead and do some pivots here. I've got two open receivers. Um, <sighs> I think... We'll send 18 out this way. We want to keep. We don't want them running side by side. 47's open as well, but uh, would that be? Oh no, that's also going to be a long yardage pass. But and also he's got number 15 right there. That's probably going to block him. Although I could easily draw the uh, pass interference penalty in that in that case. Uh, but we won't do that. That's a little too meta for me. Um, so 29. I'm going to leave 29 with number 30, and I'll tell you why. Uh, later on, we may need 29 to try a block if this if this pass is complete. So let's just go ahead and decide who our receiver is going to be. I think I think number 16 is our guy. That's the tight end, and uh, this is a a clear post route. And uh, of course, because the uh, Bonus offensive stoppage was used. The defense may not respond. This is why there's a finite number of bonus stoppages in a game. And later on, the defense can, if they so choose, elect to burn a bonus defensive stoppage to try to reset and reestablish their uh, advantage, or at least their ability to respond to this uh, attempt, this pass attempt. Now, this may be incomplete. That's a very long pass. So uh, here we go. Let's see what happens. Oh, they both missed it. Well, let's play it out. Yeah, it's an incomplete pass. They both... <laughs> oh, the pathos. Oh, how is this an 8-0 team? 
Oh, dear. I can't wait to watch that replay just in super slow motion and just laugh. Um, I had two open receivers right there. Well, that's football, guys. Had uh, the pass been complete, uh, the ball carrier could have pivoted and uh, had a pretty good shot at the end zone. You'd have had to have gotten around this cornerback. And uh, that's it. You know, a little foot race. And, you know, that was broad daylight. If the bases had behaved a little better, had either one of my uh, open fast bases managed to catch that ball, that would have probably been six points. But that's a that's a halfback pass. And, of course, the uh, free safety is still on a stationary base back here. Only after uh, gaining the switchback could the free safety even come off that base. So that's the danger of zone coverage right there uh, on the defensive side of things. So that's the razzle-dazzle play, also known as a halfback pass. Now, it doesn't have to be a halfback. You can throw it to the, you can let the fullback throw this ball as well. Uh, had the quarterback thrown this instead, I think that it might have been a complete pass. That extra, uh, whatever the measurement is, three and three sixteenths of an inch, whatever it is, centimeters, I, I can't remember the measurement. I have to look it up in the book. But just that extra yellow distance I think made all the difference from a completion and an incompletion so uh, again it's an advanced play it's a trick play and uh, uh, high risk high reward and uh, that's that's the nature of a razzle dazzle play all right thanks for watching talk to you again real soon